opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. We thank you for you being here tonight, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us. I ask you to be with Brother Walls as he brings the word tonight, Lord. I just praise you tonight, and I thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to just bless our offering, Lord. Lord, I ask you to be with our military, and I ask you to be in our Congress, Lord. And I ask you to touch our president and show him your ways, Lord. And Lord, we just give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Before I testify, I mean, before I think about it, I'd really like to testify. Uh, I just want to thank God, you know, for this church and, and uh, for all the prayers and, and the people that called and came. And we really felt a lot of love from Brother Walls and the church. And we just thank God for all of y'all. But, you know, while I was waiting in the waiting room, I, you know, we had prayed and everything. And, and I felt concerned, but I just wasn't worried to death, you know. And I know it was God, but of course Satan says, you know, something's wrong with you. You should just be worried just out of your mind, you know. But, you know, the world expects you to worry, you know. But God, I believe in casting your care on the Lord. And um, so long after Mike came out of surgery and everything, that night a sister came over and she said, you know, Penny, we was talking about not worrying and trusting the Lord. And she said, Penny, that's peace that passes understanding. And I said, wow, that, that's what I've been thinking about all day, you know. And I thought, um, I've heard about that. I've sung, we've sung about that. But you don't really get it until God shows it to you. But I didn't understand why I had such peace. But I praise God for that. Let's see. But the change from my heart has set me free.
like a new man tonight. I feel younger than I did. I feel like I could just do anything. But I, but I want to go back to my testimony tonight. And it's going to take me just a few minutes. Is that okay? I know it is. Eight and a half years ago, I had a heart attack in the Crofton Pentecostal Church. That night, we were praying my mother-in-law through to the Holy Ghost. She's passed away now with cancer and gone to meet us on the other side. But anyway, eight and a half years ago when I had this heart attack, 
they rushed me to the hospital and they diagnosed me with acid reflux in Hopkinsville and sent me home. Me and Penny had another one that night at two o'clock. And the next day we got up and we made arrangements to get to Madisonville and they found out that I had a heart attack. So they went in, they put a stent in and, and everything was okay. But you know, Satan is really wanting me to lose my, uh, what, what I'm wanting to tell y'all tonight. But, but I'm not gonna lose that. So I was just scared to death. I was scared to death. They, they were going to do this arteriogram, you know, and run these wires up in your heart and maybe put a stand in or see. And that just scared me to death. I'm just like Jethro on the Beverly Hillbillies. I come out of the country, you know, and I, I, I wasn't used to this sophisticated stuff. Amen. So that night we was in the hospital and and I was just scared to death. And I set Penny and Jan right beside of me. And I began to try to tell her everything to do because I was fixing to leave this world. I was fixing to die. I just felt like I was fixing to die. So I began to lay out a plan for Penny when I left this world. So the telephones began to ring and people began to call. And Penny got a call upstairs and I had my brother-in-law on the phone to hurry up and got rid of him, you know, and I began to pray to God. And God spoke to me, and these are the words He said. I'm telling you all of this to tell you what happened to me just the other day. He said, Mike, I'm going to love you just the way that you love me through this surgery. I said, Lord, love me better than that. I said, Lord, I don't know. I said, I want you to love me better than that. I didn't know all the circumstances, and I didn't know what I had done. But let me tell you all something. For years and years, I've tried to get my wife under subjection. I'm not talking about Penny. I'm talking about my flesh. Under subjection. I've tried to get close to God and, and I failed here and I failed there and I had to get up and repent and go on a little further but I've always tried to get my flesh under subjection. I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be just as good a Christian as I was a sinner. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I began to pray and Penny come back and I sat down beside him and I said, Penny, just erase all that. I said, all fear is gone. I said, I don't want no fear. I said, everything's going to be all right. I just couldn't understand. Still couldn't understand it. So I, I got out of that surgery eight and a half years ago, and there was two preachers walked in my room, in the ICU room, and, and or in the intensive care, whatever they call it. But anyway, they walked in, and I began to tell them this story. And one of them looked at the other, and the other looked at the other, and they said, perfect love casts away fear. And I just couldn't understand that. I couldn't understand perfect love because I didn't think that I had perfect love. But anyway, I kept questioning God. And six, I mean, eight months later, I was going through the Mannington Flats by myself in my truck. Never forget the day and God just appeared in my truck. And He spoke to me. He said, Mike, you've put off a lot of flesh just for me. And I don't want you to think that Brother Mike's boasting because I'm not. It's hard to do. Church, if you've ever tried to tear down your flesh, it's hard to do. If you ever try to do contrary to the flesh, what the flesh wants. See, the Bible says a flesh war against the spirit, a spirit against the flesh. One of them's got to be a ruler tonight, church. So anyway, he told me this. Well, anyway, I, I just kept going on. And I'm 50 years old tonight, and I'm going to tell you all something. I had two surgeries last Wednesday. Two. When they opened my chest up, God, praise God, done a surgery on my inward man, and God also done a surgery on my outward man. Praise God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to shout, praise God. Listen to me, praise Hallelujah. He done two surgeries on me in one. People said, Brother Mike, what are you talking about? I'm 50 years old, and I was never able to tell nobody that I loved them. It just wasn't in my vocabulary. Brother Walls, I couldn't tell you that I loved you. All I could do was tell my wife and baby I love them, and I tell them that every day. All the time I tell them that because I love them from the bottom of my heart. And every once in a long while I could tell my mother and my daddy I love them, but very seldom I could ever do that. And y'all were just out of luck. I'm just sorry. <laughs> but I sure couldn't tell you that I loved you. I cared about you, but I just didn't, I just didn't know what the love meant. Right. Or you understand? Yeah. I went into the hospital last Wednesday morning and and was headed down there, and I didn't tell my daughter this, and I've still not told her this, but I thought in the back of my mind, well, when they come in here and give me that shot, 
put me under that anesthetic. If I live, I'm going to be okay. And if I die, I'm still going to be okay. I'm not going to feel a thing. I'm just going to slip out to eternity. So I'm not going to feel a thing. Well, anyway, I didn't get to die. I'm still here. But as I was down there in the recovery room, as I become to, I, I began to come to it, something happened. I was in no pain. Listen, I ain't had no pain through this whole thing. If pain was from one to ten, three would probably be the highest pain tolerance that I've ever had. I've just not heard a bit. God has just blessed me tremendously through this out through this outward appearance thing or through this uh, uh, heart attack thing. But listen, when I woke up, I loved everybody. <laughs> this was something. This was something that. I could not understand, and I'm still not understanding all of it. I come back to my room, whenever they took me from the intensive care up to my main room, I come I come into the room, and when I got there, they was friends from Hopkinsville, they was friends from everywhere that had come and wanted to see me, and some of them I just didn't care a whole lot about. <laughs> when I went in, but when I come out, I cared a lot about them. I told every one of them I love them, praise God. <laughs> Before they left that room, hallelujah. A night before I come home, there was another guy come that you know I just tolerated. You know what? You know you have the people in life that you just tolerate. They're just they're not saved or nothing. You just tolerate them, you know. But listen, I told him, him and his wife come to, to down to my room and, and and I began to tell them this story. And she looked at me. And she said, "Do you mean that you even love my husband?" I said, I can tell you right now that I love your husband. And I, and I looked at him and I said, I love you. Listen, when God puts something in your life, Amen. praise God. Do y'all know that one of the fruits of the Spirit, and I skipped all of this, do y'all know that one of the fruits of the Spirit is love? Yeah. I preached in Madisonville. It's been six or seven weeks or eight or nine weeks ago. I lose track of time. And I begin to preach about love. I begin to preach about the fruits of the Spirit. And I said, we need to pick us out a fruit of the Spirit. Well, I didn't pick me out the fruit of love. But I picked me out of fruit of the Spirit, I guess, to try to, to try to pray about it, to try to get. But God seemed fit for me to have the gift of love, praise God, or the, or the fruit of love. And I thank God for the fruit of love, praise God. You know, we have to call those things, and I'm telling you all this, and I'll try to sit down. We have to try to call those things into existence, and I preach on this all the time, calling things into existence. See, Elijah woke up one morning, and had been through a long drought by the walls, praise God, a three-and-a-half-year drought, and, and, and he woke up, and they wasn't a, Mickey, they wasn't a cloud in the sky. But he told Ahab, he said, King Ahab, since you get up and eat and drink, for I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. Oh, hallelujah, for I hear a sound. Of an abundance of rain. They want the cloud in the sky. Hallelujah. They want the love in me. But God seen fit, praise God. Well, hallelujah. God seen fit where they were love. But he said, I said, hey, yeah, get up and eat and drink, for I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. Said, Sergeant, get up and go look and see what you see. Oh, I feel a holy day. Said, see what you see. Said, go up there and see what you see. Servant come back with bad news, said, I didn't see nothing. He said, go up seven times. How many knows what the word, how many knows what the letter or the number seven is? That's perfection, praise God. Said, go up the seven times and see what you see. He said, he went up all the time and he come back with an evil report or a bad report. But the last time he come up, he said, I see a man. Said, I see a crowd. I'm the side of a man's head. I hear a sound, praise God, of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound and I praise God. We've been through a drought, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you all this. The economy's bad. Everything looks bad. Listen to me tonight. Here a while back, it's been seven or eight years ago, the economy got bad like this. And I was speaking evil. I was speaking of bad reports. God spoke to me and said, do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food on your table and shoes on your feet? 
Praise God, do you need anything? Said Brother White, said, do you need anything? Said, your economy is good. Said, don't ever speak bad about the economy. I'm telling you tonight, don't speak bad. If you've got a food, if you've got food on your table, hallelujah, a uh, roof over your head, shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, don't speak evil. Say, oh, my economy is good. My God, my God. Thank you all. said when we do something. Hallelujah. Verse chapter 15 and verse 9. I'm not going to preach on this. Chapter and verse 48. The Bible said that uh, well, let me go back to uh, the 47th verse of that. And uh, in, uh, in uh, 15 chapter 1 Corinthians. I'm just going to read one to two verses. I'm not going to go there to preach tonight. The first man is of the earth. Earthly. earthly. The second man is, is the Lord from heaven. And as the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Amen. You know what happened? Brother Mike, your heavenly got sanctified. <laughs> Think about that now. The earthly man, you know, we, we, can, we can preach, we can sing, we can do all these things in this old, in this old natural body. But we have to get that, we have to turn it all over to that spiritual body and let him control this natural body. Right. Praise the Lord. That's what that, a lot of times that we don't always understand. Praise the Lord is how that God can take a, a body, a man that has been wrapped up in sin. <coughs> And how that he can take that man still living in that old body, look just like he did, maybe clean up a little bit different, maybe don't see him staggering down the street, maybe don't see bruises where he's, hallelujah, where he's had a fight. But anyway, when all of these, the man's still living in it, but when he gets sanctified in that heavenly spirit, God takes over that spiritual man that lives in him. He sanctifies that outward man and his big change comes in him. Hallelujah. Ain't God wonderful? Amen. Amen. You know, uh, God dealt with me with two different things tonight. I don't know how I'm going to connect these up, but I'm going to connect them up. Praise the Lord. In, the, in Joel, the second chapter, I'm not going to preach very long tonight. I... I, I, I want you all to know that I thank God for Brother Mike coming through that search. Amen. Amen. I thank God because that he came through it so so wonderfully. Praise the Lord. How that God has done things for all of us. I went through that surgery and uh, I wouldn't want to go through it again because I've done been through it. I want my heart to be wonderful. I want to stay wonderful, but if I had to, I could go through it with and say, thank you, Lord. Praise God. In Joel, the Old Testament, in the book of Joel, in, uh, I, I want to read you just a few verses 
in the second chapter. Praise the Lord. And then I, I'm, I'm going to uh, go to Acts chapter uh, chapter 1 uh, and read you something. But listen, let's go to the 27th verse. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and then us. And my people shall never be ashamed. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I'm still young, folks. <laughs> and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days shall I pour out of my spirit. And I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillows of smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon unto blood, before that great and terrible day of the Lord. Now let's go here in Acts 1. And I want to read you something from the uh, first chapter. I'm going to read it from a eight first this a little ways maybe eight and eight and nine but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth and when he had when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfast towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white appearance, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. I want to, you may be seated. I don't know just how this is going to be connected. But the Lord impressed me to read those two scriptures. <laughs> but whenever that I, uh, when I was thinking about this, I, there was a little story that came to me. And I was thinking about a man one time that went out into a mountain area. And he was looking up, standing looking up, and he saw an eagle's nest way up there on a cliff of rocks. Praise the Lord, I'll get this thing hooked up here again. And as he stood there and looked at that, he thought, I'd love to go up there. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get that egg out of there. Praise the Lord, that broke on me. And I'm going to get that egg out of there. And I'm going to, I'm going to take it down. I've got it, Mickey. I'll take it right here. I'll hold it in my hand. Praise the Lord. And as he went up there and he got that egg, and when he got up there, he thought it was a whole nest full of eggs, but when he got there, it was only one egg, and it was an eagle's egg. So he taken it and wrapped it up in his shirt and in his coat, and he made sure that he didn't, that he didn't burst that egg on the way down. Now, he didn't know why that he went up there and why he climbed that mountain to get that egg, but he went and got it. And he took it down and he had an old hen sitting on the nest. So he just took that egg and put it under that old hen. 
One day, he went out there, one of the ugliest little birds you ever saw was walking around, walking around in that nest. Praise the Lord. So he took him out there, and he put him out in the yard, and out there were all the stock wood, the hogs, and he'd go up, the old hogs would be grunting and wallowing in the mud, and that little eagle would stand off and watch him. That old hen would cluck, cluck, cluck. That little eagle didn't know what to do because he wasn't a chicken. That's right. Praise the Lord. And he was out, out, uh, 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 out in his own his home. But one day that little old eagle got to where he could fly a little bit, and he flew up on a gate post. <coughs> And as he sat there on that gate post, he'd fly off and he'd fly back up and he'd sit there and keep his eyes on the sky. Praise the Lord. But one day, he began to go up into the air and begin to soar into the air. He still was an eagle. He went and soared into the clouds. He would go high where you couldn't hardly see him. But one day, there was an old eagle that come flying across the sky. And that old eagle screamed. And when she did, that little old eagle looked up and he heard a voice he was familiar with. Amen. I hear you. And he sailed out in. Praise God. Oh, Lord. Good preaching. Call up a whole shot. I won't tell you. <laughs> I may not understand all this world. I may be like that little old eagle. But one day, I'm going to hear a sound. I'm going to hear something that I'm familiar with. And I'm going to rise. Hallelujah. I can say like Jesus did when he come out there. He'd been telling them all the time, see me when I'm taken away. Hallelujah. I'm going to send you back another comforter. Even the spirit of truth. I'm going to send you another comforter. They didn't realize what was happening. You may not be familiar with what God's doing. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know something that I believe in this last day, he's going to pour out his spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, and if this same Spirit, now this is in Romans 8 and 9, if this same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, it shall also quicken your mortal body. I feel that resurrected power, don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel that resurrected Holy Ghost God sent power. Hallelujah. That they felt on the day of Pentecost. I feel I feel that going on right tonight. Uh, hallelujah. I want you to know something. Uh, I, I've got to get a hold of uh, how i got to lay that thing down because I feel uh, uh, like a rapture is on its way tonight. Uh, I'm a power of the glory of God. Yes. Yes. In the last days, say it to the Lord, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to cut that camera off. I, don't, I believe it's on that. Praise the Lord, I'm going to cut it off. I don't want, I want 